Hi there, I'm Davin from Brubix.com. Behind the camera we've got James. Say hello James. Right, and today we're going to be making elderberry wine. So, what do you need to make elderberry wine? Well, first of all, you're going to need five pounds of lovely elderberries. We're also then going to need three pounds of brewing sugar, some cloves, some ground ginger, and then we're also going to need our yeast, our yeast nutrients, we're going to need some pectolase, some Camden tablets, some sodium metabisulfate or steriliser so we can sterilise everything. We're also going to need a trial jar with a hydrometer, a thermometer, our simple siphon, a bucket, a piece of muslin or a straining bag. We're also going to need a demijohn and to kick it all off with we're going to need a preserving pan. What we're now going to do is I'm going to put a gallon of water into our preserving pan, add our five pounds of elderberries, and I'm going to bring them up to the boil. So, see you in a moment. Come on in James and have a look at this. Because I've added our gallon or eight pints of water to our preserving pan and I've put in the five pounds of elderberries and what we need to do now is we need to bring it up to the boil and simmer it until the fruit is tender. Once the fruit's tender we can then uh, take it off and we can strain it into a bucket. So why don't you come back when the fruit's tender? Hi yeah. Right, the elderberries have been boiling away now for a good ten minutes. Come in and have a look at this James because it's absolutely gorgeous. It's bubbling away like anything. Just be careful because it can boil over, so you need to keep your eye on it as it's going. Look at the pinks, reds, oh, gorgeous. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna strain off the elderberries from the juice into a bucket. And we're gonna use our muslin or our straining bag to do so. And just to make my life a bit easier so the bag doesn't disappear down into the bucket, I'm gonna use three little plastic bulldog clips. Okay, so this has got to be a little bit of a careful part, so because it's very, very hot, and we're going to just pour this straight in, nice and gently, because the last thing you want to do is you want, don't want to get elderberry juice anywhere near you because it will stain. Oh, this is lovely and hot, it's like having a sauna. Woo! Nice and gently. Make sure you've got all your juice in there. Whoop, just be careful. Okay, there's still quite a bit of juice in the bottom at the moment. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave that to drain through properly for the next few moments. All the juice has now drained through, the elderberries. So we're gonna take the elderberries and our straining bag out of the bucket. Now, it still may have a few drips left, so just be careful. You don't want to get that on anything. Okay, we're now going to add our three pounds of sugar. And also to our juice, we're going to add six cloves and a quarter of a teaspoon of ground ginger. And what we're going to do now is we're going to stir all this in. Come on in, James. Careful not to steam up the camera. Mm -hmm. We're going to stir all this in until you feel no more of the grittiness from the sugar. Okay. Once that's all dissolved, uh, I'm going to transfer it through to a smaller bucket just to make my life a little bit easier. And then we're going to let it cool down to 20 degrees. Once it's cooled down to 20 degrees, we can then add our Camden tablet and our pecto lace, and then we can put it in a warm place for 24 hours. So this is gonna take a bit of time to cool down. So we're gonna leave it until it reaches about 20 degrees, and then we'll go through the next steps with you as well. Now our must is cooled down to so about 20 degrees. I've taken a small sample of here so I can check the specific gravity and I can see it is 1.088 and that basically means there's about 32 ounces of sugar per gallon so if it ferments to full dryness we could be looking at an alcohol percentage of about 14 percent 
we shall wait and see when we do the final testings. But what we're going to do now is we're going to simply take a Camden tablet and we're going to, between two teaspoons, come on in James and have a look at this. We're going to take our Camden tablet and what we're going to do is we're going to press between the two. And keep pressing, keep pressing, eventually it does go, there you go, and it creates a powder. Okay, needs a little bit more. And we're going to add this into our must. Now what the Camden tablet does is creates a, a small amount of sulfur dioxide and that sulfur dioxide sits on top of the, the liquid and that prevents any bacteria or bugs getting down into it. I'm also now going to add one teaspoon of something called pectolase and quite simply it's just a simple powder that you sprinkle in. What happens when you heat fruit up is you've got pectin in fruits and the pectin comes out and what happens when you try and clear the wine you can end up with a pectin haze and what pectolase does is basically breaks down that pectin so that, that pectin haze cannot happen later so it makes the clearing of the wine a lot easier and all we're going to simply do now is just stir that in can you see the color of this this is thick red now okay don't get it on anything because it will stain we're now going to put the top on that and we're going to put it somewhere warm for the next 24 hours and then we're going to come back and we're going to add our yeast and yeast nutrient to it. The elderberry wine has sat for 24 hours to allow the pectolase to get to work and start destroying all the pectin. What we're now going to do is we're going to add some yeast and yeast nutrients. So the yeast nutrient I'm using comes in tablet form and I'm going to use two tablets and just like we did with the Camden tablet, I'm going to pop them on a teaspoon and I'm going to crush the two together until they just literally come to a powder. Right, so that goes in. And then I'm going to add our yeast. So a good teaspoon of yeast, sprinkle it all over the top. Come and have a quick look at that, James. It just sits there quite nicely. And now, Come back James, come back. I'm just going to give it a good stir in. Get it all stirred in there. Look at that gorgeous redness of this colour. Okay. Right. We're now going to put that somewhere warm, uh, about 20 degrees, and that's going to go there for 10 days, and we're going to go and stir it every single day. Our elderberry wine has been in my boiler room now for the last five days, brewing away quite happily at about 20 degrees. And I've been stirring it every day. So this is day five, so why don't you come and have a quick look at this, James? And as I've been doing every day, I've been giving it a good stir. See, it's still going really, really furiously. So I'm gonna keep stirring this every day for the next five days. And then at day 10, we'll come back and we'll look at transferring this to a demijohn. 10 days have passed. So I've taken my elderberry wine out of my warm cupboard. Uh, the fermentation's really slowed down. Come on, have a look at this, James, compared to the last time. And you'll see that there's hardly any bubbles coming up through. There's still the odd little one popping its head up every now and then, but not very many. So now's the time to transfer it into our demijohn, and that's so that we can then ferment it to dryness. By that I mean literally allowing it to ferment till all the sugar has gone from the wine, and then we'll be ready to bottle it. So how do we transfer it from our bucket to our demijohn? Uh, well, we use a sterilized siphon, and I've also sterilized the demijohn as well. And what you do is you pop it in the top of the wine, don't put it right to the bottom because there's a load of sediment on the bottom, you don't want to disturb that. And all you do is give a good suck. Oh, had a bit of a squirt there. 
and then just literally pop it in and it's going to take a few minutes for this to, to siphon off. So why don't you come back when I've got it up to the bottom of the neck here. I finished siphoning off the elderberry wine into the demijohn. Go and have a look at this, James. This is the sediment that was left behind. Gorgeous, lovely burgundy colour. Back to the demijohn. Um, I've taken the elderberry wine just to the bottom of the neck. And what we're going to do now is we're going to add a bubbler. Now in the bottom of the bubbler you can see that I've put some fluid. That's our sodium metabisulfate solution that we use to sterilise everything. And all we're going to do with this is we're going to pop that in the top there. Now what the fluid in the bottom is going to do is prevent any of the bugs, nasty bacteria and stuff like that from getting down into our elderberry wine. So what happens next? Well, this goes into our warm room or warm cupboard back to 20 degrees again for another couple of weeks to ferment to dryness. Now fermented to dryness means that all of the sugar is being eaten up by the yeast and turned into alcohol. So how do we know that's finished? How do we know that's happened? Well, you'll notice that no more bubbles come through the bubbler. Uh, that's a good indication. What you can also do is take a hydrometer reading and if your hydrometer reading is about one and stays the same for three consecutive days, then you've got a good idea that it has finished fermenting. In which case, what you're going to do is rack this off into another demijohn so it's off the sediment at the bottom, and then leave that for a little bit and then it'll be time to bottle. Now, we'll show you how to do that in one of our other videos. So, this is going to go back into the warm cupboard and hopefully in two weeks it's going to be ready to rack off and then bottle.